Well, what you're looking at is not a fighter engine, not a Spitfire, not a Hurricane, not even a Mosquito. It's a bomber engine. It is dressed as a Halifax bomber. Now, we haven't got an Halifax bomber. The nearest thing I can show you is a Lancaster bomber. But if anybody knows what Halifaxes are, they're one of them. The Halifax was made before the Lancaster. The Halifax is exactly the same as this. What makes it different between a Halifax and a Lancaster is these things. So if you ever get a chance to look at the Halifax, and there's one in Elvington uh, Museum, that's the only one I know, but that's got radials in it. But that is what a Halifax looks like. I haven't got one, so there's four engines. So there's four of these. To the plane. So that's what you're looking at. Now, what it is, is not genuine. It's not a thoroughbred. It never flew. This engine never flew. Uh, it's a variation. Basically, what you've got is two major companies, which are Rolls Royce and Rover. Rover. Well, Rolls-Royce made the flyers, made anything that went to the plane, any mailing engine that went to the plane. Right, so hey, the Spitfire, the Hurricane, the Lancaster, the Halifax, anything that flew. Now, Rover, obviously, is a, is a better company, personally. You see, in Clitheroe, which is just up the road, Rover Wakes was there. Right? Now it's a Rolls Royce way. But what was up here was Rover and the bloke called Frank Whittle. See, Frank Whittle was not a Rolls Royce man. It went for Rover. It was a Rover man. But also for Frank Whittle, it went for the RAF as well. It meant he was a government man as well. Now, when they started making jets, Rover made a jet, the Avalon, another company made a jet, Frank Whittle was making jets, but Rover was making better jets than Frank Whittle, and Rolls Royce found that out. So they didn't go to Rover, well they did eventually, they went to the government because there was an RAF man, and he says, Frank Whittle, this is what they said to Rover, you're going to wait for Rolls Royce, we're going to give Rover the opportunity to put engines in these. And Rover was allowed to name it. So its official name is a Meteor. And it was named by Rover, not by Rolls Royce. This is a Rover engine, even though we know it's a Merlin. So basically, you took an engine out of one of these, Spitfire, and fitted it in one of these. Now we've got a model of Spitfire, we've got a Messerschmitt. They're not real. <laughs> this is. But, I'm going to do the comparison. The Spitfire, this is a Mark 1, that's a Mark 9. We're about 6 or 7 ton. An engine weighs a ton. The Centurion tank that this engine was built for weighed 52 ton. It's the same engine. It's the same engine powering this and the same engine powering that. So you look at the comparison. So I put it back to an aircraft engine by the way. So it's not a tank engine anymore, it's an aircraft engine. But that's what you've got to think of. Rover put them in this, Rolls Royce put them in this, and this weighs 52 tons. So, you've got the weight of what it came about. Uh, all Rolls Royce engines are named after Birds of Prey. As I said, they were named it named this Meteor. It's still a mailing engine. Sometimes they call it a Meteor mailing. But Rover was allowed to name it. So we're going to run it. Now the first running is always the best. Because it's a cold engine. If anybody ever watched Battle of Britain, where Michael King sitting in that spit fire, and he says, we either take off or blow up. This will boil water to 100 degrees 
in five minutes. Quicker than a electric kettle. Being on a cold running, I may wait a bit longer. That's not the only reason why I only wait for a short period of time. It's a litre a minute in petrol. This is not aviation fuel. Aviation fuel is even dearer. This is the same petrol you put in your car. So it's a litre a minute. We only, and it boils water in five minutes. We only go on it for six minutes or seven. Now what this will do, and this is the safety bit, it will blow off that cap, the pressure cap. Because that pressure cap set at 15 pounds over 100 degrees. So when that starts chucking water out, you know you're up to temperature. Don't panic. <laughs> it does it regular. I'm trying to get a cap that does 25 pounds. It still will still get to 100 degrees, but at least it'll run a bit longer. So people always point out it's boiling water. Only worry if I'm not here. <laughs> if I'm over there. But no, it won't. It will blow off water, so that is not an issue. The issue is I can't run it as long as I've light running. Also, on the safety aspect, which I like to reassure people, do these engines break? Yes, they do. By sheer age, it'll break. This is a 70-year-old engine. If anybody at 70 can do what this can do, we're doing all right. Now what Rover put into these, now we've all heard of Guy Martin, we've all heard what he's gone and done. A Merlin engine doesn't have this in it. This is a governor. A Merlin engine is what we class as a rev and go in a plane. You open it up and you go. This engine, now all these engines run at three and a half thousand revs. But what you're looking at has these on the governors, on the, on the magnetos, the core governor. At 2,000 revs, it will stop firing and go over, over. It, it's just to stop it blowing it up, basically. Because I don't know what a piece of rubbish going for you, but this is a safety thing, and they've got them in it. So when you hear it rock, and it starts to pop and bang, two things are like, like happening. One, this is kicking in, and two, it doesn't like E10 petrol. But unfortunately, that's what the government says we're going to use, so I've got to use E10. Now, I don't put additives in it, because it's a litre a minute, the petrol doesn't stop in it long enough to want the additives. If I bought additives, it's costing more than what the petrol would cost, so we don't use, but this engine will break. I'm hoping it's not going to break today, I'm hoping it's not going to break now. But these engines will break because the petrol is far, far too good for it. The petrol, this type of petrol we're using, and this is technical, gets hotter quicker. So it makes this engine get hotter quicker. That's why it blows off the water, because it gets hotter quicker. Right, so anyway, we're going to run it. Uh, that's hard to explain. We are going to run it again. Now, we will run it at 2 o'clock. Now, the reason we're going to run it specifically at 2 o'clock it's because there's a wedding over there at quarter past two. <laughs> I've been quite instructed not to run it while the wedding's going on. <laughs> so we will be running at two o'clock ish. Alright, so there you are, so there. Alright, the only one other thing I have to ask. This is my hobby. Everybody's got hobbies? This is mine. I get these as non-runners, and I get them to run. This wasn't running about 18 months ago. I'm not in a museum, not with a museum. I can't even get crowdfunded. I'm not here in a gang. I'm here on my own, you see what you get. I've got a donation box. Now, the show is free. <laughs> Any donations, we've got some books, we've got some articles, genuine articles for mail and stuff. Anything that you donate to me, either in the box or buy in, help me keep this running because I believe within reasonable time the government will kill it it will be a museum piece the pest will be too good for it so you won't see them run now why I can still get petrol I'm going to run it and if it breaks I'll fix it but at some point I hope in 20 years time you won't see them 
of electric for a start off, and that's boring. To run it on tickover is boring. I'm not here to run it on tickover, I'm here to get some hammer to show you what a tank engine can do. Right, thank you very much for that, I'm going to have a go. Shut the door. I'll have my assistant here. <coughs> Stand up, that's all do. Oh, he's got that last of the band round up, so he's going to go